Welcome to Hey Man, I'm Josh. I am Jacob. Hey man. Hey man, what's up? First of all, I just want to mention, for those of you who are listening and not watching, you are not getting the full scope of what Jacob Wolf is wearing. He looks like he's about to go lift weights on the yard. You have your Jennifer Aniston nipples popping through. They're not that bad right now. Not only are you wearing a wife beater, but it looks like you pulled it out of the bottom of the hamper. What do you mean? This was fresh. Fresh. It's, it's, it's wrinkled. The, Did it? It's the ones I bought this weekend. Let me just... Oh, is it? Yeah. Yo, dude, th to see you walk in in that whole Hey Arnold outfit was amazing. Hey Arnold? It's just... You just feel like a, like you're just walking off a Hey Arnold show or Yo, something. Yo, can I ask, though? Why are we still calling them wife beaters? I feel like... I feel like... I feel what like do you mean? I feel like we shouldn't be calling them wife beaters anymore because I'm wearing this. I'm not a wife beater. E e what else do you want to wear? What else am I going to call it? Yeah. A tank top? An undershirt? An undershirt tank top? First of all, can I just say... It, I have in my life never worn one of those under a shirt. I have. That's why I bought it. You do? Like, what's the purpose of that? But by the way, everybody, so that if it's hot out and I'm sweating, why not wear a t shirt then? I don't want the sweat to leave stains or like get my t shirt wet. Yeah, but your underarm is exposed. Yeah, so that's you're just still one, sweating just on the less, shirt. Just one less spot. But also, then if it gets hot and I want to take off my t shirt, I have this underneath. Yeah, but that's my point, is that you would at least take that off and have a t-shirt underneath, and you wouldn't take that off, and people would be like, oh, this dude is here to buy some bullets and a Slurpee. Here's the thing. I think <laughs> I think if I go out, not if, when I go out in public in this. You look like Silent J. You make that reference all the time. Yeah, but you is it Silent J or Silent like Bob? Mm, you never remember. J that. and Silent Bob, I think it is. Mm, yeah. But that's but my, you look like Silent J. But that's... <laughs> <laughs> but that's my thing is that when I go out in public in this people you're not thinking what you're thinking what that he hits, that I'm going to the 7-Eleven to buy bullets and a Slurpee uh, I don't the Slurpee not, yes I don't not think that the Slurpee yes it is Slurpee season again I'm pretty excited about but, it. Uh, by the way everybody pause, yeah. <laughs> pause. Oh, bye. and by the way this podcast brought to you by Best Day Brewing if you guys like beer and you like the taste of beer uh, but you don't want to get drunk, this is the beer for you because there's no alcohol in this beer. Yep. But good Lord, it tastes good. And you know what noise it makes when you open it? I feel like you make that sound different every time. I might, but I love cracking open a can. I love sitting in the green room with you and drinking a beer, even though I don't drink anymore, so I can sit there and pretend like we are cracking one open together. Uh, but Best Day Brewing, guys, if you like the taste of beer... And you like to taste a good beer, but you're not a drinker anymore. This is the joint for you. By the way, let me just say before uh, we get into it, everybody, please stick around. Um, uh, next week, uh, uh, the interview with Caroline Bryan comes out. So we're going to be talking a little about her and Luke at the end of the podcast. So make sure you stick around um, for that. Uh, but And by the way, thank you all so much who came out this week in Calgary. Wow. What a good time in Calgary. Wow, wow, what wow. Great energy. Yeah. You sang on stage, yeah. which is your number one fear. Yeah. And you fucking crushed it. Let me just say that. I appreciate it. Do you, you know what? I, I was, because I, I don't Have know. Have you what, seen the video yet? No. Okay. I brought, when I was packing our go bag for the show, I was going, going, you're about to walk out. And I looked at myself in the mirror and I go, bring it out. And I brought my headphones. And while you were on stage, the last 30 minutes of your set, I was sitting back there, headphones on, like just trying to get myself ready, trying to remember the lyrics. What did you sing? I sang Wrecking Ball by Miley Cyrus. And while I was back there, I was like, I was panicking. And then all of a sudden I said to myself, just commit. And my heart rate went, and every, all that, and that, that nervous energy disappeared. And I was like, just commit. I go, this is a home game. Like people are here. They want to have some fun. They're going to cheer you on and sing along. Just commit to the fucking bit and have fun with it. And that's what I did. Here's what I, why I think everybody should do something that makes them very uncomfortable. You did it. 
One of your biggest fears, singing, and you did not sing a song. I did not set you up to succeed. That's a tough song to sing. It's an impossible song to sing. Without a doubt. Yeah. But what, but what doing something like that shows you, dude, when you wake up the next day and you're like, oh, I'm alive. I'm here. All, everything that I was scared of, which is whatever somebody else thought, that's really why you're nervous, is you're nervous about how other, other people, people are. All that shit, you realize, who gives a fuck? I really, I am alive and I, I don't know about you. I always feel a little more powerful, a little stronger when I, when I do something I'm scared of and I beat it. Cause then I'm like, Oh, this was another thing that I didn't need to worry about. Yeah. So I'm super proud of you, dude. You Appreciate nailed it. it. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. It was really, fun. Yeah. I, I, we had, um, and last night we celebrated, um, my 20th anniversary and we're recording anniversary we're recording it on the day that is actually your 20th wedding yep. anniversary yeah and you so la we we renewed the vows um and we did it at the house and my dad was the officiant my mom and dad were there you were there with Iman Caitlin my daughter was there mm -hmm. and obviously your mom and I and um yo man it was a good time um your sister delivered a incredibly heartwarming speech. Uh-huh. Um, that was like crazy. It was good. Yeah. So good. Um, and, but it was a good time, man. Did, yeah. Any, any comments about yesterday? No, I had a good time. I will say, I feel like the food was a little underwhelming. Yeah. I don't want to talk about that. I don't want to bad mouth any no, place. I'm not, we went to. I'm not naming okay. it though. Right. And I will say didn't sit well with me. What didn't the food? Oh, sit well, literally. In my stomach. Yeah. Shit. Didn't shit well with you? Actually. Yeah. No. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. 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 It was, uh, yeah, it's carried over. It, like for some reason, I don't know what it was, but like we all ate the same thing, but like it was not. Do you poop with a tank top on? That feels very. Prison? Yeah. That feels very. Yeah. You pooping with a tank top I on. I mean, I poop with whatever I'm wearing on. Yeah. I guess. What yeah. if I go into the go into the bathroom? You just want me to take take the tank top off while I shit? I don't think I ever poop shirtless. You sleep shirtless. So you might wake up in the morning and have to go poop. I don't always sleep shirtless, but True. I I but I don't think I, I think definitely I would feel have. cold if I poop shirtless. Super cold, super cold, especially when there's like one that wakes you up in the middle of the night and it's just like you're never. You've never been awoken up with the urge to poop in the middle of the night? Not unless I'm sick, but like on a reg? Yeah. You, After you ate something? Okay. So let's define. Like I've had, I've been sick before and had to go, but like, just like, oh yeah, I had some Chinese food. Or like a lot of spicy food, stuff like that. Nothing woken you up in the middle of the night? N to shit? Hey, Alex, am I crazy? Like, this is not... This is not just me, is it? I'm sure it's not just you, There's but it's no just way you in the room today. That is crazy. <laughs> like the fact that both of you grown men are sitting next to me and saying that you've never had, like you've eaten something maybe a little too spicy or didn't shit well, and you've had to get up in the middle of the night to go poop. God, I think maybe my stomach works better than yours, but I've never, never in your life. I like, this is what not, I'm telling not you. Not being sick. Yeah. Not being, uh, not being sick. No. Nah. No, this is absurd. Uh, but is it absurd for us? Yeah, don't look at me like I'm the weird one. No, no, I, I would have post. I am going to post this. There's, and I'm telling you right now that I, this is you guys. You guys are going to be the odd ones out. No, listen, dude. Anybody who doesn't have IBS has never had to wake up in the middle of the night. Now I've had to pee, but that has only happened as I've gotten older. When I was a young dude, I could hold it all night. Can I tell you what's crazy? By the way, only hot girls have IBS. You what? Don't understand. Never mind. Oh, I don't understand. It was a, it was a, it was a billboard in Vegas by the Palms that said that said hot girls have IBS, and I was and Iman and I saw it and it made us laugh. Um, Real hot girl shit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah, I don't. I forget what I was gonna say. I wanted to write it down and then I interrupted you. Yeah. I brought this in so I could stop. That could stop happening, and I would stop forgetting what I was gonna say. Mm. But then you just kept talking. Mm -hmm. Now you know how it feels. So what, no, how, what feels? The when you keep talking and I forget what I have to say. Does that happen to you? Does it happen to me? Yeah. A lot. Does it happen to you when you were in that tank top? I mean, it hasn't happened yet. So, 
Mikey, Mikey, where are the tank top on the show? Yo, dude, I the low key. Are you flexing at all? No, like I'm how? actually not. I actually, not gonna lie, looking at myself in this, I feel super self-conscious. <laughs> <laughs> like extremely. I look like a prepubescent teenager right now in this fucking tank. Look at this. I have to like sit up. Yeah, God. I, I wasn't, yeah, me slumped like that. I was like, oh, I look like a Barbie doll. Yeah, I don't I, fucking like that. I wasn't going to say anything about that. Might have to do some push-ups real quick. So but, I don't. <laughs> do you want to pump it up? You want to hop down and do a couple push-ups real quick? You, you ready? Yeah, he's going to. That's probably the best. Yeah. Just pump it up. Get a little vascular in there. Yeah. I mean, how many are you going to do? I guess the question is how many could you do? How many think you could do, by the way? I mean, we don't want to talk to him right now. He's having a hard time talking in pot. Like you ten. How many things you could do? You, I, you might want to get back down there and do some more. So you might want to get up now. I would just give yourself a pump. Yeah, yeah. Feel, let's see. Let's see how we look. Still get some Jennifer Aniston nipples. Hey man, that's a compliment. Yeah, but I would. I would. I'm with you. I would sit up. I mean, if you had some of these. Wait, can I have the camera back real Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> just bust the lats out. Bust the lats out. Is that what you just said? Did, did you I, say did I'm on did bust? I, did the I stutter? Lats? No. I'm just I can't, I can't even lean back now. I feel so <laughs> self-conscious in this fucking tank. Ah, I felt all right when I walked out the house and now I'm looking at this overview and yeah, I'm like, fuck. You man. didn't have an angle above you. I know. That's what I'm down. saying. God damn it. Yeah. I mean, do, do you want me to go put a tank on and we'll just tank it up together? No. That'll make me feel worse. Why? Because you actually have muscles. Yeah, but I'm pretty skinny right now. Um. Okay. Not this skinny. Well... Not 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 legit. Can't draw, so draws a stick figure. Skinny. Just try like this. Sit like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, there you go, dude. You do not look skinny. <laughs> try that for the rest of the act. No, nah, I was tiring. I <laughs> doing that for that long. Just try it with the elbows out like this. Yeah, dude, that <laughs> is the way to go. Whatever you were doing with your neck there somehow makes your entire body look bigger. Yeah, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you know what's so funny? You know what that makes me think of? When I was trying out for the baseball team freshman year at Notre Dame. Yeah. Do you remember? Okay, this can be a crazy throwback. Remember when that TOC team, the, the championship team, the Yankees team? I have my banner at Sherman Oaks Little League. Sure. Hadley Roth coached it. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. And we were playing in that in the tournament of champions at TOC. When I played Little League, it was the champions from like eight different leagues would come to play in this tournament. The winner was like, you know, the champion of the champions. Mm -hmm. We beat the first team 30 to nothing. We beat the second team 15 to nothing. And then we beat the third team 5-4. On that last team, there was a kid named James Bacon. Do you remember him? I don't know if you do. He was the Definitely do not remember somebody who played Little League Baseball on another team. Bro. So this kid... What, James Bacon? Legit. James Bacon was his name. And so he... <laughs> yeah. So growing... like I remember seeing him on the field... Jimmy Bacon? No, James. He did not like Jimmy. He was only James. Okay. And he was, dude, just bigger than everybody. But he was sh short, but like sturdy dude. Mm -hmm. Ended up seeing him. He was a Notre Dame. And we ended up trying out for the team together. And we said, hey, he's always held a grudge because we beat him in that game. Mm -hmm. But I remember we were in the cage and there's a senior there who's kind of helping with like BP and whatever. And he looks at him and he goes, you got a thick neck. And he looks at James, you got a thick neck. And he goes, what? He goes, so I know you're going to be big. You might play on this team. You'd you got big neck, no shoulders. Like that's, yeah. Dude, dude looked like, like was that? And he goes, this dude could rip a ball. Dude went up to BP and as a freshman hit one 350 feet to left field. You, and I was like, jeebus, but yeah, the but like big, big, big traps, big neck kind of guy. Quick hands. Yeah. And it was only a corner guy. Like sometimes play third, but was really a first baseman type shit. No, I like, hear that. I hear that. I hear that. I, uh, I can't take myself seriously at all in this. <laughs> Is there, I mean, do you want to run out to your car and get a shirt? You think I have a shirt in my car? You don't carry a shirt in your car? The fuck would I carry a shirt in my car? For? Just in case you're out wearing a tank top and you're like, I look dumb as fuck. I I'm, should put a shirt on. I'm, I'm going to start. <laughs> <laughs> I think I am for sure going to start carrying a shirt in the car. I was going to put a shirt on over this when I left the house and Iman goes, uh... my gr Iman looks at me and goes, you wearing that on the pod? <laughs> and I go, yeah. You got a problem with it? And she goes, ah. she goes, well, you let me wear whatever I want. I'll let you wear whatever you want. But just know, don't think that I like this tank top look. And I said to her, I go, kind of the reason I'm wearing it. Yeah. Because I know she doesn't like it. Yeah. Okay. Listen, is that why? I mean, okay. 
listen, dude, I think you should wear whatever the fuck you want. And I, yeah, that's the you thing. know me. Like I don't. Yeah, and I am, and I've worn whatever I want on this podcast multiple times. We've talked about it. True. So yeah, I'm just. What? It's also hot as fuck. Let just me, wearing a t-shirt right now is like. P.S. Let me just say, and I can't wait to post these pictures. You were so wrong about the shirt I was wearing last night for the anniversary. It is one of the best shirts that I've ever owned. And when I bought it, you were like, that shirt looks terrible. I was thinking, well, I'm, here's the this thing. This dude when, doesn't know. When you bought it, so it's a Karl Lagerfeld shirt. Yeah. When you bought it and in we were London. in London, you were in jeans and regular stuff. So when I saw you in it, I was like, nah, it just doesn't like, I don't like it. And also, my opinion was it was like a gay rodeo clown shirt. And then you were in a cowboy hat last night. Kind of fulfills <laughs> what I was thinking. But seeing you in it and seeing you in like a suit jacket and all that stuff, I was like, all right, this is not as bad as I had originally thought. Gay rodeo clown? Yeah. It's like a collared shirt with like... They, the ro rodeo hey. clown? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rodeo clown. Why do you keep saying that? I don't know. <laughs> uh, all right. Let me ask you, what did you, how did you feel about the anniversary and the, the, uh, pa the part, not party, but like, how'd you Ceremony? feel? Ceremony? Ceremony, yeah. Yeah, it was good. It was great. It was cute. It was, um, mom was like, beware, it's over the top. It wasn't super over the top. No. It was exactly what I thought it was going to be. She nailed that as usual. As always. Yep. Um, and she, when we got to the vows, uh, mom was like, will you hand mine to me? And I looked over and saw a single spaced, a novel of, Paper. Four typed out single spaced pages. Yeah. Was her toast. Yeah. And when she said to me, she goes, We're going to renew our vows. And I was like, Cool. She goes, Let's just say something quick to each other. I said, Okay. And I, when I saw her pick her pages up, I'm like, I'm going to have to riff a little bit. Dude, when I, when she was like, Oh, it's going to be quick. And I was like, What's quick for mom? That's what I had to think about. I was, was like, It's amazing. Cause I, I'm not going to lie, I'd thought about Jack's eulogy. Yeah. Right. And Jackson, my my buddy who passed away, we're going on five. We're going on yeah five years this yeah. year. Holy shit! Anywho, and I remember after you know Jody and Otis and Kiki went, they're like, now if anybody else would like to come up and say something, this is your time. And I I had wanted to go first. I had thought about going first the entire time, and so I did go first. But also part of me was like, when mom comes up here with that twelve page book, Shh. no one's gonna. I'm, I don't want to follow her. She like, is. I, a I, writer yeah. and an eloquent speaker. Yep. And yeah, you're going to get at all the language. Yep, yep, yep. All so right. that was also part of the reason why I wanted to go first then. Tell me something, dude. What are we talking about today? I was thinking about, I was thinking about something generationally. And I was thinking about like, you know, my high school for me and middle school and whatever, just me as like, an, like as a kid and how I think how different bullying is nowadays. Like for me, what I, made you think of that? I don't know. I was just, I was seeing something online about a kid who was getting picked on, but then like there's this, there's a group of guys. How who, were you picked on as a kid? Uh, mental warfare, straight mental warfare. It was never physical. I mean, I did get punched in the face my junior year um, at the second school I went to. Yeah. Remember that? I got hit on the top of the head. But that wasn't really a bully, right? No, no, no. It was, it wasn't even a fight. Like, yeah. I just got taken to the ground because dude had anger issues. Yeah. Yep. It is what it is. We're friends now. We played on the same basketball team, whatever. But, uh, I, you know what I saw? I saw a video. There's a, there's a group of dudes who, when they hear somebody's getting bullied, they pull up to their school and like all these super nice cars, and, right? And they come in, they take them on rides and they're like, Hey, you know, just, you know, like we got your back and this and that. And I think about how I was bullied, which was all mental. It was all just, give me some examples. Like, uh, what I, ages? Give, give me, hit me. Um, uh, let's go 11 to 14, which is middle school. I was picked on because of my hair and I grew my hair out, right? Cause I was donating to locks of love. Yeah. And so it was a lot of just like, Oh, you look like a girl. Even there were even substitute teachers who like, there was one super, and this wasn't bullying. This was just an 80 year old sub who couldn't see. And I was talking and he was like, he was like, he was like young lady, sit down. And I turned around and I went young who? And he was like, what? And I go, I'm a dude. And he comes over to me. And he pats me with his clipboard and goes, sit down, young lady, again. And I grabbed his clipboard and I snapped it over my knee. What? Yeah. And I was like, don't call me young lady. I am a young man. And he goes, what's your name? And I was like, Jacob Wolf, right there at the bottom. And he tried to send me to the principal's office. Yeah. And instead, I just walked around the school for an hour. 
and didn't go anywhere. I'm so glad I didn't hear that story while you were still in school. That'd have been your fucking ass for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And that's yeah, why if I, you had touched that dude's stuff, I might have had a conversation. He touched me with the first I might have had a conversation with him, but I'd have definitely had a conversation with you too. Oh, 100 percent I I I I regret that. Yeah. I I don't condone that. I should not have done that. Can I ask a question? But it was though. also just like peak I, I get you it. know and peak hormone and testosterone. Yeah. So I guess my question is like the teasing, the hair, and I just used the word teasing, right? Mm -hmm. I think in my day, you would have just been like, oh yeah, I was just giving him shit. I was just teasing him. You wouldn't have thought that you were bullying. Do, do you know the, you know the difference I, I'm talking about? I, I agree. And do, one, yeah, yeah, go ahead. I feel, I don't know if we were mentally tougher. I don't know if, if we just hadn't been educated on this is not okay for someone to say this to you. This is. Or if it's just like nobody gave a fuck, but I, I, we all said that kind of shit to each other all of the time. Now here's my clarification question: okay. Were you saying that kind of shit to each other in your group of friends? No, we would like you know that dude named Brian O'Brien who was at my school. <sighs> yeah, and he'd walk down the hallway and I'd go Brian, oh Brian, and he'd be like fuck you Josh, and I'd go Brian, oh Brian. <laughs> And we, it's one of my favorites that I, I don't yo, know why I fucking love that dude. And by the way, rest in peace, Brian O'Brien. Oh, what a great dude. Shout out Brian. O'Brien. But I never meant it. At, it was just like a goof and we yeah. goofed on each other. But I have to say, I honestly don't. I never asked him, Hey, does that bother you? Yeah. I will say what I considered to be bullying. There was this dude that I grew up with named John Carroll. I think I'm going to say rest in peace also to John Carroll, but John dude definitely caught some physical. Yeah. And he caught some physical and mental to the point where anybody who's, and I have some people in high school who listen to this. He ended up one day he came into school head shaved Oof. and his nickname changed to psycho. It was like full metal jacket. Oh, it was like what he, happened in Fiddle Metal, Full Metal Jack. Dude, if he, if, uh, he, yeah. he just, there was a switch. He, all was, did he dress darker clothing too? It was like, a switch. It, now, I don't think he went full psycho, but his nickname was a psycho and he kind of embraced it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I do remember, and I don't remember teachers or anybody ever saying one fucking thing. And they were scared he was going to reach into his backpack. No, no, no. To, to the people who oh, were fucking oh, with, oh, with John. Got it. Well, teachers, grow, but here's the thing. Teachers nowadays are, I hope, saying something if they see it. But even teachers when I was growing up didn't say anything. Teachers never did anything. because. But, but dude, like, if we go back to the difference between teasing and bullying, isn't there, shouldn't we, look, in the ideal world, we're all super nice to each other and yeah, nobody says anything bad. But in reality, it's part of the walk around. So what's the line? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, Between, for, fi, to me, physical shit, but the online mental shit yeah. is different than what we used to do in person. I mean, for me, like if it was people I was friends with or people I was cool with and we were, you know, talking shit, I'm talking shit. But if we're not acquainted and like we don't talk outside yeah. of school and you purposely go out of your way like, there were times I would walk by groups of people. They'd be in a conversation. They would all purposely stop their conversation to yell something at me. Yeah. I got called the F word in, in middle school a lot with the long hair. Friend. Sure. Okay. Um, it's a little 23 letters, yeah. actually. Um, and I, it was just like, it was people going out of their way to say something to me. And if it was people I knew and they're like, yo, you look like a girl, like, my buddy, when my eighth grade yearbook picture came out, and yeah. my buddy in yearbook was like, bro, I'm going to warn you right now. You look like a witch. Dude, when you told me that, I... And you were like, it's not that bad. And I showed you the picture. And you were like, oh, it's that <laughs> yeah. bad. <laughs> yeah. I, yo. If, I almost wish if, you were wearing a tank top in that picture. <laughs> <laughs> I would have looked worse than I do now. At least it would have distracted least, At least the, the tattoos are like <laughs> something, but it's like... That's why I'm saying you're in the yard. Yeah. But, but in high school is, I think, is when it escalated. Stop looking at me, God damn it! <laughs> I think I think high school really is when it escalated because not only did I take a lot of mental warfare, but I also took some physical shit, but on the football field from yeah. my own teammates. Yeah, I remember because there were 
the dudes who got mad at me for not picking them when they raised their hand in a classroom. And he legitimately targeted me on the football field mm-hmm. with pads on. Mm-hmm. Like, Stuff like that, or like when I didn't make the basketball team. Mm-hmm. I didn't think I was going to make the basketball team. You remember that. I was like, I'm just going to try out, see if I can maybe take a bench spot, mm-hmm. make some friends, you know, just up my status a yeah. little bit. And I ended up not making first cuts. And I was like, that seems a little weird. There's like, I'm 100% better than you, 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 and you. But it, it was what it was. And I was like, all right, cool. And I went up and, you know, shook all the coaches' hands. I was like, thank you guys for the opportunity. I appreciate it. And coach was like, hey, what's your name? And I was like, Wolf. And he goes, oh, yo, my bad. I forgot to call your name. You made to you made a pass for us cuts. And I was like, oh, dope. Cool. Like, I appreciate that. I'll see you all tomorrow. And I went to the locker room. I was getting changed. And I'm not going to say his name. But there was a kid in there who was varsity since he was a freshman, but only because he was 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, mm-hmm. Like, but he was built like pre-muscle Ante Tacumpo, which is skin and bones. Okay. And it's funny for you to say that about somebody. Yeah, but okay. like it, it looks weirder when you're that tall. Agreed. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, Sean Bradley. Yeah. <laughs> and so I was getting in there and he had the locker close to me. And he goes, and he said something about me going up and sucking the coach's dick to make it past first cuts. Right. And just, and I was like, I was like, bro, whatever. And I was like, I didn't. I went up and shook his hand and said, thank you for the opportunity. And he said, yo, I forgot to call your name. And he just was mimicking, mocking. He called other dudes over to tell me that I was fucking the coach and just like all this bullshit. None of these dudes am I acquaintances with or friends with. There are some that I grew up playing ball against, like baseball, basketball, whatever. But we were never friends. That's so not how it is. feels more attacking. Yeah. Like, again, if we were friends and we hung out outside of school and you guys were shooting the shit, we're talking shit. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. But I, I held back from, you know, you know, going after saying that he was, he's only on varsity because it was a make a wish thing because he but, had a shaved head. But that, but listen, dude, this is my point. I think back when I was growing up, that's exactly what would have happened. You, it would have been, if, if someone was saying words, you would just say words. I didn't have that confidence. Right. Though. And right, they right, knew right, right, that. Right, that's right, the right. thing. They knew I was I, a shy, vulnerable kid who didn't have the confidence to stick up for himself. So they came after me on purpose in groups. That's yeah. what I'm saying. And then on the football field, to have multiple people target me in practice in pads. Also, I was number one receiver, so yeah. y'all shouldn't have fucking did that. I'm not going to say number one because I caught one ball all year because yeah. my quarterback was But my point, whatever. my point, Jacob, is, and by the way, I'm not, for people listening, I'm not saying that any of it's okay. I, I Like for me, I'm just trying to find, and I'm not saying the way I grew up was better, but what was bullying and what was teasing or what was just, you know, giving somebody shit because I I bet you, if you would ask that dude now, Hey, did you bully Jacob Wolf? He'd be like, no, and he, and you were like, but what about this in the locker room? He'd have been like, yeah, I'm just, I was just giving him shit for right. It, It, and by the way, again, not justifying it, but trying to find out, where the di- where the line and when that changed because but bu- and the word bully I don't know that when I was growing up anybody gave a shit I don't think that's okay yeah like they're definitely I think social media bullying is completely different because mm-hmm. you can really get into somebody's kitchen over and over and over and over again yeah. yeah yeah and if you're especially a young person developing mentally it's gonna fuck them up yeah. I, I think for me, the line is like when the only things that are said to me by those people yes. are that. Good point. Like if there was, if after, like if there were other conversations we had, we're like, oh, yo, you watched the game or, hey, yo, did you, uh, are you playing this game? Or, you know, just ran regular conversation. Yeah. I think it would have been different. And I think I would have a different look on it. But when the only things I hear out of their mouth are things that are aimed at me yeah. to hurt my feelings or whatever the intention was, that's where I think the line is. I, would, I think I think teasing and bullying, yeah, like I tease my friends. Yeah. I tease people I know. I tease you. Like, but I'm not going out of my way to talk to people in some sort of way that, like if I don't like them or if I want to keep shit to myself, I'm just going to not put the energy into it. But the fact that they were going out of their way to make me feel bad about myself. I'm with you. I think that's where my line is. Okay. But for me, like, other than on the football field, there was no like fights in the courtyard. There was no like 
meet me, meet me over the bleachers after school. And everybody would at three o'clock go surround these people and, or like, you know, stuffed in a locker, stuffed in a trash can, none of that shit. Like yeah. physical stuff isn't really, I mean, maybe it is now with this younger generation. I don't think so. I think so. I think it's a lot of more mental. I think so. But I think also with the mental comes so much more rage that leads that they bring into school. Like for okay. me, middle school, high school. Yeah, it was I don't, my freshman year is when Instagram was created. Okay. That blows my fucking mind. Freshman year of high school is when my, it was Instagram way, was created. Can I tell you right now, it's such a, I can't imagine on a completely different, I can't imagine having porn in my pocket at 14 years old. I would have been jerking off in school. <laughs> uh, legit, dude. Legit. If you, at 14 years old, if you were like, hey man, on your phone, you have porn all the time. I'd have been taking bathroom breaks. I'd have been like, you know, now his, is this history? I think now's a good time to jerk off to Thomas Jefferson. So, you know, like, let's go Google Thomas Jefferson porn. But why did you have to pick a dude? I don't know. Cause he looked good in that wig. But you know what I'm saying? Oh, <laughs> the, the fu- what do you tell you? The colonial pony? Bing. So, Nobody gets that reference. I know. My so, girl, when I when my hair gets long and I put my hair in a ponytail, my girlfriend Iman is like, hey, you rocking that colonial pony. And yeah, it fucks me up. I'm I, at colonial pony length right now, and I'm not happy about it. I can't, but like to have porn on the phone. Anyways, that I just thought of that. Do you know what else I just thought of? Mm. And Apparently how good Thomas Jefferson looks in the wig. You freak. No, you know, maybe Tommy Jefferson wasn't the right. Oh, I called him Tommy. I was going to say, what, first name? We're on a on a friendship basis now with Thomas Jefferson? It's Tom Tom is what I, his friends call Tommy. him. Tommy. Tom Tom. Tommy. 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 Tommy Jefferson. Fucking Ronnie L. Dodd and Tommy Jefferson. Tom, Tom, hey, I, I'll tell you something. Are you saying out of all of our founding fathers that... Uh, Watch what you say here. <laughs> I have a feeling I know where this is going. What? Pick your next, word, next words carefully, my friend. Uh, let me just hop off that. Yeah, hop off t- Tommy Jefferson. Tommy. Can I just say something I wanted to say coming in today sure. that I forgot, and then we can get back to masturbating to our founding fathers. Yo, last night, can I tell you, 20th anniversary, 20 years with mm-hmm. your mom and the 20 best years of my life and the person, like I never bought that they were perfect people for you, perfect person for me. Mm-hmm. And to do that toast for her last night and to list all of those things, actually, I yeah, I was dreading it going in, but I'm glad I got to say all that stuff to her out loud. I know that's not just important to her, but it was important to me to re- to hear it out loud and be like, holy shit, she has... She held that shit down. Yeah, for a long time. Absolutely. Shout out, mom. Can I tell you my favorite part about the entire night? And, it, and my seeing my parents there and my dad being the efficient was amazing. Mm-hmm. And your sister's speech for real brought me to tears. I know. And having Iman there was fantastic. She really feels like family. She is family. And... um Obviously, having you there was amazing. And you know the best part of the night? Hmm. When that dude told me I looked like Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, me? For real? He goes, yeah, yeah. Do you look like Matthew McConaughey? I'm like, come on, dude. Say it again. I told your mom all night. I'm like, can you believe that dude? I, wa- I She was like, we, this is our 20-year anniversary. I'm like, and you're married to Matthew McConaughey. How does that make you feel? But she's not. <laughs> Yo, dude, why would you say that? She kind of is, right? Mm, I no. mean, look at, look, look at, look, look. Yeah, Matthew look. McConaughey doesn't really have that much gray in his beard. Uh, I want to tell you that at his age, he does, he just doesn't show it. Yeah. Anybody who's my age and is I, like, I, I got no gray hair, I'm like, yeah, dude, that is just. I'm still true. mystified on how your mustache is not gray. It's the one part that hasn't gone gray. Like, like. It's 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 here. Even the handlebar is good, and then it just leads to gray. Like, how does that work? Because that's, I have no I have no stress on my upper lip. This is the stress free zone right here, bro. Stress. You want to ride? Hop on the mustache. Stress free. I just want to shape it up because it's this, uneven. Oh yeah, dude. You, you know what I kept last night on purpose? One long hair that shot across your mom. Was, I I hate the the hairs that go over the lip. For me, yeah, they're just like annoying. Either. So I always have to like. Just shape it a little. Let's get back little, to me little, looking like Matthew McConaughey. Or we, you wanted to go back to jacking off to Thomas Jefferson. Um, listen, I want you to be.
be careful about how you speak about our founding fathers. But can we just talk about this for one second? I mean, how I speak about our founding fathers? Can I just, let me just go back to McConaughey one more second. Uh, if you're listening, Matt, which I know you are. You're not. Which I know you are. If, if you need like somebody to play your brother in a movie, me, you, and Woody Harrelson, we all smoke around the same amount of weed. Um, I, you know, listen, dude, you obviously need to do a sit up. I, not everybody can have abs like me, McConaughey, but, uh, and we'll, and, you know, we'll sit around, we'll smoke some of Woody's weed. We can all, we all, you know, kind of have a laid back and then we'll just look at each other's faces all night. You know, we'll just smoke weed and pass a joint and I'll look at your face. You look at my face. Then we'll look at Woody and be like, you shouldn't be here. And then we'll just stare at each other. It's just an offer, dude. Me to you, you know, one McConaughey to the other. All right, all right, all right. You know what I'm saying? And I'll even, I'll, you know, I'll give you the secret for the mustache. Right. Matthew McConaughey, I know you're not listening, but if you are, I don't know who this dude is. Don't, <laughs> don't, don't take anything he says seriously. He's, uh, are you, listen, I didn't, th I never saw it until the guy said it last night, but we yeah, are, you know why you never we're saw like it? Spitting images of each other, you, me and McConaughey. But you know why you never saw it? Yeah. Because it's not true. I, it's, and the only reason he said it is because you were in a goddamn cowboy hat. I, but you know what's crazy is I like, why I looked at a picture of him this morning. I'm like, that's me. That's him. Cap, it's me. Him is cap, me. We cap. are one. Yeah. He can actually tan, though. We have the same. I can tan very well, actually. I, I, uh, for sure I can, just not my legs. Not as well as him. My upper body tans. My not, lower not body Not as well tans. as him. Um, There's a tan individual. Yeah, dude. But let me just tell you, I, I would, McConaughey, you want to do a sit-up competition? I'm here. Put, you want to just bounce our pecs for a little while together? We can do that. You want to rub some suntan lotion on each other? I'm here for it, man. Whatever kind of party you want to have, I'm ready to have with you. All right. There we go. Um, it was one of the cringiest things you've ever done. <laughs> I mean, just from that, I would like to walk out of this podcast studio. <laughs> like, I legit would like to which, hang up the headphones right now which and part, walk. Which part? The uh, staring at each other? All of it. <laughs> All of it, including the Tommy Jefferson. Let me just tell like, you. Like, the last 10 minutes has just been rough. What? Let me ask you, Jacob. When somebody told you that you looked like the Gosling. I said, I said, that's not true, but it's, thank you. You could not stop talking about it. I did talk about it a lot. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I brought it into the podcast yeah. the next day. Yeah. I talked about it to him yeah. on. Yeah. Yo, I'm not going to lie. Every time we go back to that Trader Joe's, if that woman is at the cashier, I go into her line. So, okay. So no matter how many people are in her line, I go into her line. So what I'm saying to you is don't, don't pretend like you haven't heard something like it. Yeah. I, but I didn't go into your spiel right there. You talked about it for a long time. I didn't do a fake shout out to Matthew McConaughey about being his brother and a stand in, in a movie. I didn't either. I didn't say I wanted to be in a stand in, in a movie. Did those words ever come out of my mouth? They did. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Nice try. They did. I yeah. said, I'd like to be a stand in, in your movie. I think you said you'd like to, if you need a brother for your movie, a brother. Yes. But I'm not going to be a stand in, I, although I could be clearly a body double because that is what the dude said. He said, Your pecs and ass. Exactly. Relax over there. That is not what he, he said. He did. He said, In those pants, your ass look exactly like McConaughey. And he said, Your shoulders and your pecs are supple and smooth, just like his. And your face is a, is a spitting image. This is all what he said. A lot of it, what I just said out loud, was implied in what he said. He did not. Was actually, it though? He did not actually. Sure. No. Yeah. No. He, dude. He went. Did you see what he did? He said to me. He goes, "You look like McConaughey." And then he went. That's what he did. I'm ready to walk out of this studio. I'm not gonna lie. Listen, he gave me a right cheek slap. And anyways, I know for sure he didn't because because what? I was there. Or were you there for that? I was right next. I'm the one who called you. You didn't hear him say it, and I gave you the satisfaction. I called you over and go. Did you hear what he said? He went, no, I said, he just said, you look like McConaughey 2.0. And you went, oh, thank you. And then walked away. I did do that, actually. Yeah, you grabbed your chest <laughs> yeah, like <I> this. <laughs> and then I walked by the same guy and I said, don't boost his ego that much. And then walked away. And he said, you actually don't look anything like Ryan Gosling. That I heard him say that too. facts. You I, do. Maybe you do. No, I don't. Not in a, in a tank top, you don't. But in, a, in wearing I, other clothes, you might. No. I, I appreciate that compliment from anybody who wants to give it to me, but I definitely don't look like Ryan Gosling. I, I, I like the Adam Driver. You comparison. actually, you don't look like Gosling. I will say, dude, 
I look at some of these videos that you and I do or some of these pictures and I'm like, God, he's a, you are a handsome dude, man. You yeah. Know, my, my hair's too long for this shit right now. It's perfect for the tank top. Though. It is. I agree. Yeah. I, I, I put my hair up in the colonial pony before I left and I was like, this is a choice. We should make <laughs> a song about the colonial pony. Colonial. And then you can put your hair in a ponytail and I'll get you one of those wooden horses. And you'll pretend to ride it around stage, and I'll sing a song you, about the colonial. You get me pony. one of the jackets, like one of the Minuteman jackets. Oh, like like you like were the Revolutionary War, dude. You know what? You'll be the the colonial pony. Is the is what Paul Revere rode through With that? The British are coming. The British oh, are coming. Oh my 100%. god! Hundred percent. But I also there has to be a line in there when it says, or like I'll just like something in there that says "fuck a man bun." It's a colonial pony because they're different. Not a man bun. Oh, you don't have a man bun. You're, no, no, no. You're a colonial I, pony. Yeah. Uh, someone asked me to put my hair in a man bun, and I was like, eh, I'm good. Can I tell you, Colonial Pony, also not a terrible, if you wanted to, like, be a wrestler. It's a good name. You could be the Colonial Pony. Do you remember when Freddie and I were doing the wrestling bit? Oh, you don't remember? The wrestling bit? So, Freddie Prince Jr. and I did a podcast together. And... We talked about who could cut a better promo. And so his, my promo was the producer. Oh, yeah, I do remember this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I oh, do, I do and remember. I was just, and so all my, my promo was all about, you know, he's not going to get the part and you're going to end up on the casting couch and all this, right? I was just basically. Casting couch. Oh, and the producer had these fucking crazy shades and my hair was slicked back. But Did he, you come out in a suit? But did with, you come out in shirtless. a sleeveless suit? Shirtless. Underneath. Okay. Jacket, shirtless. So you could... People were like, you look exactly like McConaughey. And I'm so, never going to hear the end of this yeah. shit. You know what? My wrestling name would now would be McConaughey. Hey! <laughs> right? And so... <laughs> yeah. That, I have to figure out how to get make you forget this. Never will I ever forget. I might start out every podcast with, all right, all right, all right. But if you start these podcasts with, hey, I'm Matthew McConaughey, and this is Jacob Wolf, and this is, hey, man, you just called yourself McConaughey? Or I think, Josh McConaughey? I think I look- Why am I feeding into this? I think I look enough like him where people will be like, yeah, that's Matthew McConaughey, obviously. Cap. Doing a, doing a podcast. Stop the cap. Doing a podcast. Cap on so many levels. Doing a podcast. Cap. Cap. Okay, I'm, move, cap. I'm, I'm moving off the topic because I'm- okay. Don't look like Matthew McConaughey. Whatever. Don't be jealous. I'm not. Because you don't look like Matthew McConaughey. Right. And also, the Ryan Gosling comparison is way better than a McConaughey comparison. Dude, stop it right now that Ryan Gosling is better looking than Matthew McConaughey. Stop it right now. First of all, take away, just objectively, dude. Now, Ryan Gosling's super charming. His eyes are a little close together. Yeah, dude. His eyes are close it's together. Facts. Yeah. It's just, it's just... Yeah. It is cool. Yeah. You no, know. dude. If his head was bigger, he would look a little downsy. Dude. That, <laughs> I'm just saying. That, his, God, head, his head, his eyes are close together. If he had a little, he would look a little downsy. Yo, Gosling in the place beyond the pines. McConaughey doesn't have a character that looks better than that. Dude. On screen, as far as charming and captivating, Gosling dominates McConaughey. But there's no doubt. And and his magnetism, I added a couple letters in there, I or missed why. or missed a couple. Yeah, letters. A, it's like I had a mini stroke. Yeah, but his not the full blown. His magnetism on screen is to me almost unmatched because you've taken a close eyed, above average looking dude, but with the charm, it comes through the screen. That it's hard to yeah. just but him and you crazy just, stupid love. If you just, but his body was ridiculous. His but body if, is still ridiculous. If you take just objectively, no, you, nobody's ever seen them act before. Nobody's ever heard him talk. A picture of McConaughey and a picture of Gosling. Are they shirtless or just headshots? It doesn't matter. You gonna tell me that that, that, that McConaughey's that. body? Is not better than Gosling's? You pull up McConaughey shirtless, I'll pull up Gosling shirtless. Dude, this is... This is the craziest segment on a podcast I think we've ever done. I will tell you. Now, I, it's not that I have a boner, but I might get one. Uh, Matthew McCon... I can never spell it. It's like spelling tomorrow. It's 
Tomorrow, what are you talking? Tomorrow is the, it's it, not, easy. Not tomorrow. I mean, like necessary. Yeah. Okay, that's better. Shirtless. Okay. Uh, this is crazy to have this on my Google search. Yeah, I have the. It's, what? It's How, crazy to have it on my shirt search as well. Or, are you kidding me? Okay, that is a great example. So, can you show that picture to the camera? I wish we can you zoom in on his face, please. It's not even. Oh, dude, stop it. Stop it. Right? Fucking game set match ski. Stop. That's crazy because this is this is a movie set photo, and that is him on the beach. That's him not even trying. That's me. Hey. Do you do you want to know the picture I scrolled past but purposely didn't pull it up because it's a beach photo of Ryan Gosling? Sure. Oh boy. See? Oh boy. Show that one. Show that one. Okay. That versus. Yeah. Okay. Stop it right I, now. I, I, and, I'll give you that one. And then look at their faces. Look at this face. Stop it. Stop it. And yeah, I might give you that one. This actually. is who I look like. No, it's relax over there. It is not who you look like. Apparently it is. We got tons of strangers on the street telling one, me about it. This is the first time we've ever heard it. Why am I feeding into this? He's saying it to make me angry and I'm just reacting like he wants me to. If I could, I could count on two hands. How many people have told me I looked like Matthew McConaughey? I could count it on one finger. Well, you've only been there for one. So have you. No, no, actually, I've never heard it before. But that's I, what I said. So have you. You I were know. there for that one. <laughs> I know. But the, I don't think there's any doubt. Okay. Well, listen. That this made me feel really good. I feel very validated. Yo, on a completely different set of topics, Reggie Bush got his Heisman. Thank fucking, fucking God. God. Dude, I can't, I can't believe it took this long after they made NIL deals. Like, it took a year for y'all to realize that you should be giving him this Heisman back. But also, what, dude took, what, 50 grand? It doesn't matter. It, it, like, it, doesn't like, matter. The, it doesn't matter. But the smallest amount of money compared to these high schoolers who are getting yeah, different millions. Rules, different rules I, back then. I understand different rules. But how is it possible? The NIL didn't affect how good this motherfucker was I'm gonna, on the field. I'm going to tell you right now, in my many years of watching college football, I would say he's in the Mount Rushmore of college football players. As far as... We're talking just running backs or top four ever? Uh, for me, top four college football players in college that I've ever seen dominate and electrify I don't know that I'm going to... I would have to put him on a running back Mount Rushmore because I don't know if I can pick just a regular Mount Rushmore between all the players. I, like, I'm looking at my my era. Tim Tebow. Yeah. Johnny Manziel. Maybe so, yeah. There was yeah. nothing like that. We have that, that was nuts. Yeah. Um, that dude from Oregon, the kick returner, the running back... Um, Fuck, what was his name? By the way, um, he does not a lot of credibility when you can't remember his name. Fuck, hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, Reggie Bush could be in there for me. Deion Sanders could be in there for me. Uh, Bo Jackson? Bo Jackson. I did not watch enough of him in college. Herschel Walker, I did not watch enough of him in college, but he was... From what I understand, a man running amongst boys. D'Anthony Thomas. That was his name. Yeah. Just like, uh, every, it was like every time, he was like the college version of Devin Hester for me. Yeah. Because every time he sat back there and he got the ball and he caught it, there was no touchback, there was a 50-50 shot that this dude was taking into the house. Dude. And he was faster. Do you remember watching everybody. Reggie Bush? Yeah. It dude. was like, oh, he's going to score right now. Every time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I this is this one's a debatable for me. I could put Texas Vince Young up there, yeah. just because of the fact that he, that Rose Bowl he, he did win the championship by himself, completely. Yeah. Um. There, I mean, Cam Newton was one of the most dominant college football quarterbacks ever. Yeah. Uh, I went I'm, to that I'm, game where they won. I'm putting my boy Joe Burrow up there. Yeah. Um. I'm trying. Who else? Um. Oh my God, Derrick Henry. Nah. In college? Nah. What are we talking about? Nah. Not even a, not even top 10. Nah. Let's move past this. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to give Reggie Bush his goddamn flowers. Um, I do want to talk, guys. Uh, super excited about next week's guest. Uh, we have an interview interview with Caroline Bryan. Um, the interview with uh Bunny, you guys, it was such an overwhelming response to. 
Um, and we're excited. We have interviews with Caroline uh, coming up with Karen Fairchild um, from Little Big Town, Ryan Sickler. Uh, we got a bunch of other ones coming, so we're yep. excited for you guys. But this next week with Caroline, man, what a, uh, um, a, a what an amazing woman. Yep. Um, Truthfully. and her and Luke, for those of you who don't know their story, her and Luke, and, and you'll have to get into it a little more on the podcast, but her and Luke have really stepped up, in, um, as human beings in such amazing ways for their family and other people's families. Um, not just monetarily guys, but with time spent, um, if, not even monetarily, just like specific, just the word plain family, yeah. like in so many ways. So they've had a lot of tragedy and they've stepped up every single time. So it, it the, her story in the podcast is amazing. I will tell you, man, I, I was kind of drawn to her before, like I, if I'm being hundred percent honest, I was never uh, real familiar with Luke's music. Yeah. Um, I, d I did like his tight jeans and, uh, the way hip, he, the hip swivel, the way he shook it down on stage. I thought it was amazing. And as a performer, but I just never listened too much. I really got into Caroline and Luke over like right around, uh, quarantine because Caroline likes to pull pranks on everybody all of the time. That's your shit. That is my shit, man. <laughs> And so she and I connected uh, independently of everything else because I was like, hey, you're a fucking straight up G with these pranks and you show no mercy on anyone mm -hmm. and everyone is on eggshells around you. What I love, her kids don't, when it, when it, they don't believe a fucking, not a word. That's how I feel with you. I, but I love, I, it, but what I love about it is they don't believe a word except they love her implicitly. Yeah. They trust her. They have a great, honest, and open relationship. And there's also still room for fuck about. Yeah. But I, even after the fuck about, they still know that family. It all gets pushed aside and they and, all love each other. And Luke's mom, her stepmom, is the fucking dude. She is bananas in the best possible way. I don't think stepmom, mother in law. If mother in law, yeah. If you don't, mother in law, sorry. If you don't follow. Caroline to see Luke's mom and how they interact and the pranks they play on each other. You are missing one of the best follows on the internet. Mm -hmm. And Caroline, I think she has a 12 days of pranks miss. Oh, jeez. And do you know what we did? Okay. I know what you did. So for those of you, so one, we wanted to prank, uh, uh, Philip and Becky sweet who are Philip is in, um, little big town mm -hmm. and Becky is his wife. And so I had gotten with Caroline because we were going to have dinner. Me and Beth were having dinner out at their house, at Luke and Caroline's house. Mm -hmm. And um, I was going to pretend like something that Becky had made had sent me into a crazy shock and I had to go to the emergency room. Emergency room. And at the time, I was real light, dude. I was real light. It, it, and so... We, I, we're sitting at the dinner table and I start, I'm like, I feel real weird, guys. I feel, I feel real weird. I got to go use the bathroom. So, and you could hear them talking. They were like, what do you think it is? I, was like, I don't know. And I came back out and I was like, ah. And I forget what it was, cinnamon. Yeah, you, you. I remembered that they had said specifically that they had put cinnamon in this dish. So I was like, ah, it just it feels like I had cinnamon, but there's nothing with cinnamon on here. And Becky was like, there's actually cinnamon in the bread sauce. And I was like, what? And I go, oh, oh, and I ran to the bathroom and Becky and Philip went dead white, lost it. So what else we were doing is we were at the time we, I was like, Caroline was like, Luke and I could pretend like who the fuck cares? He should just get over it. So they just started who fucking kiss. Shouldn't he just, maybe we get him an Uber and he can get himself to the, yeah, suck it up. Philip and Becky were the nicest people in the world. Were Super. beside themselves. Super funny. They were like, they told Luke afterwards, I, for a second, I was questioning you as a human being. Yo, but at one point, Luke comes into the back and I had brought a concoction. I had brought a cup of water, but with, I forget what solids I had put in there, maybe tiny tomatoes. So I poured it into the toilet. It sounded like, yeah, like, yeah, like yeah. real shit going in. 
And you could hear Becky and Philip from outside. They're like, something bad's happening in there, right? And so I had talked to Luke. And at the time, dude, you know, I was actually legitimately sick. Yeah, I yeah, just yeah. didn't know it. But I was only like 145 pounds. Mm-hmm. So Luke goes, I'm going to pick you up in my arms and walk you out the door. And I go, fucking <laughs> He fucking fireman carries so he, you out. Not, of not fireman. In like oh, marriage. The, marriage. But I really played it out like I had my head back and I was splayed hey, out. No! Yeah, yeah. And I was walking out and Becky and Philip were like, we'll meet you at the hospital. We'll meet you. I mean, that's a good flex right there. We'll meet you at the hospital. We'll meet you. And I couldn't hold it anymore. I just started laughing. Yeah, and they yeah. were like, you asshole. Yep, yep, yep. But Car- Caroline had, I was like, where were you going to put cam- hidden, cameras hidden, hidden, in the house? And right? she was like, are you kidding? I have cameras hidden in the house all the time. That's sketchy. So she was like, you can hide one here and you can hide one here. And But what I love about them, and I can't wait for you guys to hear this interview. What I love about them is they are very human with each other. Um, And they also realize that fun is a big part of what keeps this party going for everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It keeps keeps everybody on their toes, but also keeps the the energy up, liveliness. And I will say, I really love, I've watched Luke on uh, American Idol, and I like to watch shows uh, with people that I know on it. Yep. Just to support them. And um, he's great, man. I, do you remember watching American Idol? Yeah, you remember what? You remember when I stopped watching? Sanjay, what was his name? Sanjay, the guy who was terrible, who people kept voting through as a joke. No, I stopped. Was, I stopped watching American Idol when they sent Chris Daughtry home. Oh, dude, that was early on. Dog, they sent Chris Daughtry home. He got sixth place, and I was like, I'm never watching the show again. And what happened? Yeah, I never watched that show again. We used to sit down and have family TV I nights remember. to watch American Idol. And I would sit in my room for that hour because I was not, I was not with that bullshit politics. I was Chris Daughtry. Wait, who, wait, I think Justin Guarini, he was season one with Kelly Clarkson. I'm pretty sure I know he was on Chelsea. I'm pretty sure I had him on an episode of my podcast. But I would Justin uh uh but early on American Idol, because early Simon Cow was such must see TV, dude. He's still kind of must see TV. I'm not gonna lie, but the but combination also, of him with Paula, Dr- with pa- Paula Pil- Pop, Pill Pop, and Paula, Pill Pop and Paula. This is how she clapped. I loved it. And fucking, it's gonna be a no for me, dog. Randy Jackson, dude. Dog, call- it's my favorite. Like, I did I, you hear me call you Randy Jackson the other night? No. When you were on stage, dude. When you were on stage uh, and you were having to sing Miley, yeah. You go, guys, be careful. I'm a little pitchy. I go, who are you, Randy Jackson? <laughs> what do you mean? Because even hear that. Me, that's a little pitchy, dog. Yeah. Okay, yo. So, Daughtry was on season five. Let me give you... <sighs> the winner was Taylor Hicks. I don't even know who the fuck that is anyway. Taylor Hicks, I believe, has a show here in Vegas. He was the dude with gray hair at the age of 26. Correct. Yes. Yep. He beat out Chris Daughtry, Kelly Pick Pickler, and Catherine McPhee. Okay. All two out of the three of those still have a music career. Uh, yeah. It, Kelly Pickler also know her personally. Very nice woman. Super funny. And way better than Taylor Hicks. No, uh, no, I don't know about that dude. Taylor Hicks could sing. He just he dude, looked like he was 90 when he was 20. Dude. He, he was like Steve Martin. He looks like a crazy mix right now of Guy Fieri and Paul Hollywood. Yo, dude, he has become a little more handsome than I thought. He looks like a... He looks like a rich Spanish billionaire. He does not. He yeah. looks like somebody... That's the guy who won American Idol. That is not. That's him. That's Chris Daughtry, dude. No, it's not. That's not Taylor Hicks. Dog. Wait, what? That's not Taylor. Dude, that dude looks like he runs the tilt a oh, at a local fair. That is Chris Daughtry. Yeah. Wait, what? Dude. Yeah, all right, fair enough. Dude, Daughtry looks like he's a carny, like he's taking tickets at the Ferris wheel. Daughtry looks- You fucking kidding me in that picture? Hold da- that picture up. Da- da- Hold da- that picture up. I am. I'm zooming in. Jesus Christ. Look at that tilt a world, dude. Fucking yelling at he's me. He's taking tickets. He's got. He's only got one. He's thumb. taking tickets and milfs. He's he's <laughs> only got one thumb. And this dude for sure has a shirt that says milf hunter. Yeah, dude. He lost a finger at the. He like he gives prizes at the. You know where they throw rings? Ding ding. Impossible game, by the way. Yeah, I've never seen anybody win it. Me neither. All right. Um. Well, okay. That, that was fun. Can you show people how you walk around the airport with the show? No, no, I'm good. That's only sometimes. Oh, okay. It's not all the time. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> On that note, thank you guys so much for stopping by and listening to this episode of Hey Man. 
Uh, we really appreciate you guys. Again, none of this would be possible without any of you. So thank you so much. But on that same note, thank you to the newbies. Thank you to the oldies. But also, tell a fucking friend. Um, ComedianJoshua.com for tour dates and tickets. Yo, May 9th, May 9th, May 9th, our LA people. Netflix is, like, Netflix is a joke comedy festival. We are at the Bourbon Room in Hollywood, okay? On May 9th, it's a Thursday. Come see us. Come have some fun. It's going to be a great fucking time. Um, ComedianJoshua.com for tour dates, tickets, all that good stuff. Uh, Joshua Comedy on all platforms. Uh, it's Jake Wolf on TikTok, Jake underscore Wolf on Instagram. Thank you guys again so much for being here. Um, I will not be in a tank top next week. Um, go ahead. Let me just say something. First of all, thank you all so much. Uh, full of gratitude for all of you and the amazing growth we've been having on this podcast and on the channels. Um, thank you all so much for coming out to the shows. Calgary, You, it was like the energy was through the roof. Appleton is basically just a couple tickets left for the whole weekend. Batavia, a couple tickets wet, left for the whole weekend. So start getting your tickets now for Philly and Austin. Those are in May. Los Angeles people, I know you are our second biggest city. I'm, I'm talking to you. I would appreciate it if you came out to this show. The new hour is amazing. It's pretty electric. Netflix is a joke. Spe festivals in town, so there's going to be some fun guests popping through. Uh, we can't wait to see you all. Um, Duda, you have been growing exponentially on stage. Appreciate great job, it. dude. Great, great, great job. Um, and uh, that's it for me, man. You got anything else? Tell somebody you love them today. Do something nice for someone. We'll see you all next week. Love Later. You. Hey, if you love this last episode of the podcast, you are going to love the next one. Be sure to watch it. Here it comes. Come oh, yeah. Hey, man. Hey, man.